can't forget the day we met your hello everybody welcome back to my channel this is zessa herbal soap skincare and lifestyle here we teach people how to make soap how to make cream how to promix how to live a healthy life how to take care of ourselves how to make cosmetics and generally how to learn things that will be beneficial to us not only as individuals but to our families and to our communities if you know you're interested in this kind of things please subscribe to our channel so that whenever we post any new videos we will be able to be notified and watch them today i'll be answering a question from peace she said i should teach her i should talk about tallow in soap making either cold process or hot process so i'll be talking about tallow in soap making cold process i'll be talking about using tallow in soap making cold process Tallow is a general name used for fats gotten from animals, mostly sheep and cows. Okay, so we have beef tallow, we have goat tallow, we have sheep tallow, we have even tallow from other ruminants that are not domestic, like deer. Okay, fine. So all these oils are known as tallow. So each of these oils also have a different saponification value. So the tallow I used in make doing this calculation is beef tallow. It's beef tallow, okay? I believe that should be the one that is we commonly find around in the markets, in our markets. So tallow is a very nice oil. It is close to palm oil in properties. So when you make your soap with tallow, has a lot of similarities to do to our own soap that we make using palm oil you know there are some soap the soaps we make using 100 percent palm oil are like our soda soap in nigeria here and then our azuma blows soap the one they do azuma soap in ghana that one too is 100 percent palm oil so when you make soap using tallow it will have similar properties to this soap 100 percent tallow soap can be made but because tallow on itself do not have such very high, not that it's not cleansing, no, it's cleansing, but it does not have very high cleansing properties, or should I say, it, to improve the quality of your soap, at times you want to combine it with other vegetable oils. Like some people mix their tallow with coconut oil and castor oil. Some people mix their own with only coconut oil or olive oil, depending on the combination the person wants. So, but today I'll be giving you a recipe using tallow alone and a recipe using tallow and palm kernel oil, okay? Why I do that is because, you see, palm oil alone, when you make soap with palm oil, it creates a hard bar. But the salts, the foam it gives is this thick, creamy foam. But when you make soap with palm oil, palm kernel oil, it gives you palm, palm kernel oil or coconut oil. It gives you a hard bar too, but not as hard as with palm oil. It gives you a bubbly, bubbly foam compared to palm oil that gives you creamy, salt, thick, thick foam. So by the time you now mix this, palm oil and palm kernel oil you get a proper a better quality soap that is both hard long lasting with bubbly foams with bubbly creamy foam is it not so so in the same way with tallow now we are going to combine our tallow with palm kernel oil to give us a soap bar that is superior in quality to only tallow alone or only palm kernel oil alone this will give you a bar soap that will have bubbly bars also okay our tallow in its natural state that is our animal fat is it not so our beef fat when you go to butchers they usually have a lot of this fat that is left that it, they keep usually there is not much high demand for it when you go you can buy this animal fat cheap 
okay it usually comes in a solid form okay the color might be white or off white that is your tallow and it is rich in palmitic acid in oleic acid in steric acid lanoleic acid all these acids are also similar to what is found in palm oil and also similar to what is found in our own bodies as human beings so because of that soap that is made with tallow mm -hmm. is naturally gentle and very moisturizing very good for the skin so tallow soaps are not bad for the skin okay so and this tallow as we see it is also used in cosmetics because of these properties that it has okay it's, it makes it a very good emollient and occlusive ingredient in cosmetics meaning that it keeps in moisture and prevents the body from losing this moisture out into the environment so its cleansing properties are highly improved when it is combined with other vegetable oils as i've said before some combined with coconut or castor or olive we will be doing our own today with palm kernel oil some people do complain that they feel there might be smell it doesn't really have a high smell because i have tal i have tallow in the house it doesn't really have a high smell it doesn't have a, 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 a disagreeable smell you can use your essential oils or your fragrance or fragrant oils in this soap okay if you feel that this the smell is the, disagreeable for you so as a quick journal, let me just add to you, in case you go and buy this tallow, how would you use it? How will you render your tallow? You will not just buy this tallow in hard form and then come and use it like that in hard form. No. What you will do is you first wash it so that there isn't any blood stains or any dirt that is remaining on it. Especially if you're getting it fresh from the butchers. When you, get, when you buy it like that, you rinse it, then you come and cut it into pieces. But if you can, you can also pound it into shreds, okay? Pound it so that it will become, it will get smoother pieces or shreds. After, after you've done that, you now pour it into a clean, dry pot, put it on fire, and allow it to cook or fry itself up. As it is frying up, the oil will be coming up, the oil will be coming up. You continue this as the oil is coming up, you're packing it out, you're packing it out, you continue this until you get to the very last you see that most of the oil has come out you just be left with some little small small chunks of meat and pieces of ligament that might have been inside the meat inside the fat is it not so that is how you do you pack your oil and then you keep it as of that time it will be in liquid form so by the time you leave it the next day or depending on the weather, if the weather is very cold, after some few hours, it will turn back to solid. So now, assuming you've done that and you keep your oil, you allow it to cool. Now, when you want to make your soap, anytime you're ready to make your soap, if you're going to make only tallow soap, that is 100% tallow soap, I'm going to give you the recipe for 500 grams of tallow soap. If you need to make an amount higher than this, you can multiply this 500 times 2, that will give you what? 1 liter. If you multiply it times 3, it will give you what? 1 and a half liter. If you multiply it by 4, it will give you what? 2 liters, okay? So I'm making, giving you this recipe is for 500 grams of tallow. If you want to make soap with tallow. Now, this tallow you will melt. When you melt it, it will turn back to liquid state. I like to stay to room temperature. You need 166 grams of water okay then for your caustic soda you will need you will need 71 grams of caustic soda that is what you use to to form your lye okay i mean if you are going to add super fat you can decide to use your shea butter as your super fat you can decide to use almond as your super fat you can even decide to still use the same tallow liquid tallow as a super fat okay okay now at five percent super fat that is if you're making for baking soup at five percent super fat for your super fat you can use 26 grams of either your same tallow or your palm kernel oil or your almond oil or your shea butter you can use it as your super fat then for your fragrance you can also decide to use you can for your fragrance or essential oils you can use anything from 10 to 
26 grams of either fragrance or essential oils as your fragrance this is a, okay then if you're going to put in any herbs you can put in the same at about the same between you can still put in the same if you're going to use any herbs you can use still use between 10 to 26 grams for your herbs okay if you're going to use a foam booster you can use 52 grams of your sls if you want to add foam booster if you don't want to use foam booster you want to use sugar you know you can use sugar too to to increase foaming properties for sugar you can use between for sugar you can use 30 grams of sugar and add it to it as your foam booster if you don't want to use sls maybe you want to do make your soap bathing soap 100 percent natural okay that is for 500 grams of tallow but if you're going to make this tallow into your washing soap then don't add your herbs don't add your super fat that is the only thing you will remove and if you, in case you want to add maybe calcium to harden it up you can decide to add add up to 103 grams of calcium if you want to add calcium to harden it up if you want to add silicate you can add up to 20 grams of silicate okay that 20 grams is less than five percent of your total sample if you want to find out how to add calcium to your soap i already have a video on how to make soap with calcium you can go and watch that video on how to i i, I think the title of the soap is the, the title of the video is calcium how to use calcium in soap in the in it i made an experiment where i added sugar i added borax i added 30 percent calcium 50 percent calcium to my soap to see how it will come out and all that okay so in case you want to add calcium to your laundry soap but if you're not interested in adding calcium you can leave that out already this lye and water alone with your tallow your soap will come out fine so now let's assume you want to make your tallow with pamkano oil so i'll be giving you calculation of let's say you have let's say you want to use 500 grams of tallow to 500 grams of pamkano oil you will need let's say you're you're mixing 500 grams of tallow with 500 grams of pamkano oil you will have to use about 160 grams of caustic soda and 373 grams of your water okay you then your color you can put to taste your perfume too you can put to taste is it not so then your if you want to add herbs to it if it's for baking soap if you want to add herbs to it you can add even up to 58 grams of your dried herbs okay or or 58 grams of your fruit puree whatever it is that you want to put inside okay then if you want to um, add maybe uh, a foam booster you can put up to even 100 grams of your foam booster then in case you want to turn it to your laundry soap and you want to add calcium the amount of calcium you can add high you can add even up to 232 grams of calcium but if you're making laundry soap remember you will not put super fat you will not put herbs and for super fat in this particular recipe you can use up to 58 grams of your super fat then if um, why i'm going to add another recipe is because you know that tallow is hard it is your potassium your pk your pamkano oil that will make it a little bit soft is it not so let's say you don't let's say what okay what if you want to use 500 grams of tallow to 1000 grams of pamkano oil this is the recipe for this you for this 500 grams of tallow to 1000 grams of pamkano oil you will need
you will need 249 grams of caustic soda to 580 grams of water 249 grams of caustic soda to 580 grams of water your super fat will be around 87 grams your your foam booster if you're adding will be around your foam booster will be one about 175 grams your color and fragrance you can put to taste okay but if you if you want your color your fragrance to be much to to be very high and remember this fragrance could be either essential oils or your artificial fragrance okay if you want your fragrance to be to be much you can add as much as even 80 grams of fragrance okay for this particular one you can add between you can add as much as 80 to 90 grams of fragrance then for your calcium in case you want to turn if you want to use this recipe for a laundry soap you will not put your super fat you will not put in herbs okay instead you use if you're to if you want to add calcium you add up to 350 grams of calcium if you have any question you ask now let me give you the procedure that you follow in making this soap to make this soap what you first do is to melt your oils melt your oils and combine them together then get your super fat keep it aside if you know you're going to get add color to your soap fetch a little bit of your oil not the one that you use as super fat your main oil that you use to make the soap fetch a little bit of it and then melt your color in that in a little bit of that oil so that the color gets to meet completely before your soap finish mix it thoroughly make sure it is well mixed if you're not sure that is if your if your color is oil based okay if your color is not oil based it is water based you fetch a little bit of the water that you're going to use to make the soap and dissolve your color in that little water so that it get completely dissolved okay before you start making your soap now after you've done that you now you now measure out your water measure out your caustic soda after you've done that you now pour in your sodium hydroxide into your water mm? don't pour your water in your sodium hydroxide so that it will not you know sodium hydroxide is very it's a strong alkaline alkali and it gives off a strong exothermic reaction so there is tendency of it giving out heat and maybe volcanoing so instead pour it into the water gradually when you pour it in you stir it and mix it in until it has completely dissolved it will turn from cloudy to clear and please do this in a well ventilated environment and wear your ppe that is your personal protective protective equipment wear your hand gloves wear your face masks wear your shoes if need be and wear your apron okay then after you've done that after you've done that you now carry your lye now this mixture of your caustic soda and water is now your lye you carry your lye pour into your oils and stir it pour it pour the light gently don't just pour it at once like that pour it gently as you stir pour it gently and you stir and i'll advise you not to stick blend this recipe too early because already this is a hard soap so it will have tendency of tracing fast so what i advise you to do is to stir it first stir it gently first until you have actually gotten a good good trace before you stick blend if you want to stick blend and you might have to stir vigorously this is not the kind of soap that you put stir small and it will trace on time no this one you have to actually stir it well for it to trace so when it trace you now pour it into your mold when you pour it into your mold you cover it up allow it to stay till the next day then you cut it into pieces then after cutting you now cure your soap for at least at least two weeks or you can cure it for between two to three weeks before you now start using your soap okay some people even let it cure for even up to six weeks if you have the patience or if that's what you want you can do it that way okay 
So I think this is all I have to tell you about tallow soap. So madam, peace. If you have any question or if anybody have any question, let me know. And if you have any recipe, any soap recipe you want me to calculate for you, just let me know. The only thing you need to tell me is your oils. Tell me your oils. Then tell me what and what and what do you want to add into your soap. Or which kind of soap do you want to make. Is it baking soap or is it laundry soap? You let me know. Is it... Is it medicated soap? Okay, what is it that you want to add into the soap? Just tell me your ingredients. I'll calculate them out. Okay. And these recipes have been given. If any of you have tried them out, you can show me. If you have any questions also, you can ask me. I'm always here for you. Thank you very much, my YouTube family. Thank you for sticking with me and watching this video to the end. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share our videos. Thank you so much, my fellow soap makers. God bless you all. Bye-bye.